Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Street. So, it's been a while since the last episode because, you know, this game is a work in progress, but uh, the developer has recently updated the game, so I'm playing that now. And um, this is Chapter 9, titled Ash. Um, and it almost looks like we're opening up on some kind of deep philosophical poem of some sort. No doubt spoken by Zack, but uh, let's... Let's hear it. Uh, in that brief instant, I see a sparkle of humanity in him. I see his vulnerability unmasked, his anger, his hurt. I can almost hear the echoes of a lifetime of revenant voices, a merciless choir of discriminating taunts, their song a vexing rhapsody of torment. Don't know what he's talking about, but I'm guessing it's about Brayden. And I just accidentally stopped my recording, so, um... Let's not do that again. I think humans have an innate desire for justice. Even when we're children, we renounce things that aren't fair. Then why did we touch Brayden in this chapter, or in this route? <laughs> I mean, it was... I mean, it keeps reminding me of the fact that I touched Brayden, because every time I, um... You know, you go to a new chapter, it's like, did you touch Brayden? <laughs> Did you touch him while he was sleeping? And I'm like, yeah, I did. I did. I did that. Yeah. I don't even know if we're actually taught it or not, but we desire it. We seek it despite myriad reminders that it's not cosmic law. Ultimately, I think it's because we seek control, predictability within that which isn't predictable. People fear what they don't understand. But the older I grow, I'm beginning to learn that justice either doesn't exist, or that it's entirely subjective. Like, what? Like, what could be spurring this on? Like, what has occurred that, like, emotionally and mentally, you need to be acting this way? I mean, I get it. I guess your place burned down, but, like, I don't know. It just... He fe I feel like he goes into these philosophical discussions that just aren't earned. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. The old that's that that the that the ultimate judgment on its existence relies on our own individual assessment of circumstances and how we choose to weigh and define them. How we choose to allow them to affect us. And how we choose to respond to our perception of the truth. Things either conquer us or they temper us and make us stronger. I'm far from perfect, clearly, but I feel like I try and do right, despite not always being successful. Wow, that place is really ablaze. Um, I was about to try to zoom in like I'm playing room number nine. <laughs> I wish I could zoom in. Ooh, I mean, if as much as as bad as that game is, um. In many respects, it had it was great in its options. It was amazing in like all the different options presented to you. Anyhow, um, yeah, this place is. I didn't start the fire, but the world's been burnt. So something's been burning since the world's been turning. <laughs> what the f have I done to ever deserve this in? in my life to deserve this. I don't know, like... So is it their fault that their dorm is on fire? I don't know. I don't remember if, like... Memories cry out within me. Is this a song I'm supposed to be singing along to? Like whales of the damned. Or is my voice... Am I am I hitting those um those notes, guys? As the flames lick and devour them. Am I gonna have to censor some of this? I haven't been paying attention to if anyone was nude. Everything we have is taken. Oh god, not the not the ogre. No. Every memory consumed. I don't know what sort of beat to sing this to. 
every experience. <laughs> okay, I definitely have to censor this. <laughs> it's like, at each special moment. It's like, it's supposed to be like, I don't even know what this is supposed to be, but it's weird and there's like a... I don't know if I'm supposed to be singing this. Oh dear. <laughs> Massacred before our eyes. I don't know if I'm supposed to be seeing this, or it's just like images of nude Brayden. You know... <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand. Uh, okay. I, like, was that supposed to be sentimental or sexual? I don't know. Somewhere behind me, a puddle shatters. Fate quakes as the waves ripple outward and dawn breaks the bleak horizon of our shared destiny. Huh? Who is this? Just some random people? Okay. Someone call- No, that's Mikhail. Is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess they're the random people in the background. Someone calls out my name, but I'm unaware. It's distant, lost within the impinging rain and the hollow halls of my fractured subconscious. Somewhere within the inferno. Brayden is just so shook. <laughs> Something foreign growls in cessation and splinters with an infernal crack before collapsing in raucous destruction. Oh yeah, I have to do the voice. Um... Zach? I frown. It's so many people get pissed when I do this voice. It's my name, but I barely recognize it. My head pans a surreal landscape. Is it really a surreal? My eyes are unable to focus on anything as rain cascades down in torrential sheets across my face. Zack! Mikhail. Zack! Our eyes lock for the first time, and he runs towards me, pushing through a horrified nomadic congregation of exiled souls. Like, just imagine that, like, in the moment, this is what Zack is actually thinking. <laughs> like, as everything is happening, he's just narrating all of this to himself. Like, what kind of main character syndrome do you got? My body jerks as he embraces me. I can feel his fear. His heart thunders against me. He's shaking. The most poised person I know is terrified. His chest heaves as he tries to speak through labored breaths. Jesus, dude, I couldn't find you guys anywhere. I heard screaming outside and checked my feed. The second I saw something about a fire... Wait, were you inside the building that was burning? And you found out through your feed? Wait, I'm confused. Was that his burn? No, that wasn't... No, wait. He doesn't live in that dorm. Okay, never mind. Yeah, he doesn't live in that dorm. He lives in a different dorm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he pants. I checked the pool first, but didn't see you guys. There's effing people everywhere. Why would you check the pool first? Oh yeah, because he- Okay, oh, he knew we were there. Okay. Yeah, wasn't he the one who let us in? It's all coming back to me. He's panicked. I freaked when I saw the smoke coming from your dorm. What? The... Huh? <laughs> what the... Hey, Mikhail, you're kind of exposing my V-lines there. What's up? Need a little bit of lovin'? Thought I told you I'm into that straight Brayden. His arms frantically frisk me up and down, lifting my shirt. I'm numb to all of it. Yup, the fire didn't hurt these goods. Hey, guys, uh, why are you touching him? Are you guys okay? Are you hurt? How do you answer that? How do you answer anything right now with a yes, no, or I'm leaving Brayden for you, Mikhail? W one of the three. I absently shake my head. I'm not physically hurt. There's not a scratch on <laughs> I guess this has done irreparable emotional damage to you. Like, what? Honey, your your dorm caught on fire. Like, what do you think happened? I don't... C calm down, Zack. <laughs> You're just being angsty. But emotions seem to phase in and out. Whatever this is, whatever I feel right now, 
transcends that of physical pain. Oh my lord. Honey. Drama queen. Brayden stares. Yeah, he's had that dumb look on his face for a while. His body seems hollow. A soulless husk. Is it really? <laughs> you know, Straighty over here is just watching the burning building and you're like, he's a soulless husk. He's not even human anymore. Like, oh, are you sure? Is this not an overreaction? Everything I love about him seems to have gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I might be dumping him for Mikhail after all. <laughs> um, he's just not the same person anymore after he saw our dorm uh, go up in flames. Retreated, he retreated to a sanctuary far away, far beyond the putrid smell of smoke and the combustion of material loss. What do you say in moments like this? Whoa. Bruh. This is actually kind of weird. I mean, the shirt lifting thing was pretty weird, but like... I don't know. I Maybe you could let that slide, but like, what is this? Like, if I was Brayden, I mean, I, maybe you could let this slide. They they are officially going out with each other, right? They're like officially boyfriends. Are they, aren't they? I want to say they are, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong about that. They maybe never made it official. Um, but yeah, if, you know, I was Brayden right now, like, come on, what is this? Mikhail grabs me and forces my forehead into his. Zack, listen to me. We'll figure something out. By the way, <laughs> can you smell my breath? I hope the anchovies don't reek too much. His words don't fix anything. They don't change anything. In fact, they sound hollow too, like he's even struggling to believe them himself. They don't bring anything back. But somehow, for now, I try to convince myself it's enough to nod in disoriented dependency. Okay, I don't know how Brayden didn't say anything from that. And then, um, Mikhail just like teleported instantly behind Brayden and is like, nothing personal, kid. <laughs> Mikhail places a hand on Brayden's shoulder, pulling him in tightly. His hand squeezes reassuringly. Uh. But Mikhail says nothing. He doesn't have to. He can't. Words of comfort have no power here. Okay. Let's just let's have a moment of silence. Let's bow our heads and have a moment of silence, I guess. Brayden's head silently falls, defeated. And I feel my heart fracture. I want to help him. I want to take him into my arms and tell him everything will be okay, but I don't know that it will. But most of all, most of all, I want to tell him that I love him with everything I am and everything I have left. Did you, they not say that before they left the pool? See, I don't remember, but I can't. Maybe I should watch like the last episode again <laughs> that I recorded or uploaded to YouTube. They say love conquers all. And as I stare into the smoldering nebula before me, I realize love cannot stand against the formidable powers of regret and fear. Life sucks when you're a ball of anxiety. You spend half your waking moments worrying about what could possibly or potentially happen, and desperately trying to convince yourself that it won't. And just when your fear finally subsides, Something devastating happens that awakens it with renewed strength. Come on, B, let's go. You guys are soaked. You can crash with us tonight. We'll figure something out in the morning. I stare. My eyes. Tr I like how the voice I do for Mikhail is still very upbeat. <laughs> I stare. My eyes trembling in a sad attempt to find some form of comfort, solace, or hope. But hope is gone right now, scorched beyond recognition. It's ash scattered into the rain, and consumed by the shadows and evening darkness. Zack, come on, man, it's gone! I take one last look at the past. My mind is swirling vortex of regret, anger, devastation, and loss. 
Oh, can you guys not look back like that? <laughs> the rain falls harder as I turn around and walk. Trying to try take trying everything I can not to look back. Well, you're failing. I try my best to convince myself that I have my friends. I have everything that truly matters to me in this world. You have one friend and you have Brayden. I try to convince myself, why am I being so mean? I mean, maybe because he's being annoying. Maybe that's why I'm being so mean. I try to convince myself that I'm not a materialistic person and bask in all the cliches of the world. That things can be replaced. That other things are more important. Like, what even is in your room other than, like, clothes? Maybe your laptop. I've never seen them, like, do anything else. <laughs> Like, they've been on their laptop, like, once, they watch TV, and they, they're, I guess it's their bed, I, I don't know. I don't feel like there's anything in there. Like, I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe I'm being heartless. But the truth is that the tragedy is a way of targeting the most vulnerable parts of you and exploiting them in their entirety. Like a slow-acting poison that boils and gnaws deep within your soul. But I feel... Like it mostly hurts because times like this force us to question our actions, our decisions, our motives. Everything I've done to this point is put on trial, prosecuted by my own hindsight and indignation. It's incredible how easy it is for us to find excuses in our lives. To put things off until tomorrow. Wow, look at this. Look at this scene of them walking away. And it is so misty. Or is it smoky? I mean, it's one building on fire. The whole area is not going to be this smoky, is it? To ignore all prior warning signs and signals that life screams into our face that tomorrow isn't guaranteed and that opportunities don't last forever. And it's sad that it takes something as powerful as loss for us to realize our armor of perceived invisibility is merely a cloak. It's a shame we have to die to learn how to truly live. You're dead? This killed you? This killed you, you mentally and, or emotionally? And I feel a burden of a thousand lost opportunities weigh heavy on my soul as we walk through the irreverent baptism of unforgiving rain back to Mikhail's dorm, none of us knowing how to rise from the ash. This is a little bit much. This this narration a, a little bit much, Zach. Just a tiny bit. I don't know. Pretty dramatic. Pretty dramatic queen. Oh, what is happening here? What's going on? <laughs> I love this. Oh, it was just like, I don't know, watching a movie and then, oh, I have to censor this. I'm gonna have to censor so much. Um, but I, and then it's just like a little montage of fading images. Um, I love it. Oh, look at him in his cute pajama pants. Aw, I really don't like those glasses. Why are you exposing your bulge? What movie is this that they're watching? I love this fake movie they're watching in the background. It was some guy with wings. So are Mikhail and... Uh, I don't even remember the guy's name. But Mom Effer, are they sleeping on the same bed? And Brayden and Zack are sleeping on the same bed? Jesse's not afraid of showing affection in front of Mikhail and, um, and, uh, mom effort. But, um, okay, now looking at this in the lights, you know, with some actual light, do... Does Zack look, like, better? Like... Like, what I'm trying to say is, does... Is, what would you call it? Rendering? Is, is this rendered better? Like, I don't know, it looks like there's more detail in these images than last time. Like, am I- I, th I don't think I'm wrong. Am I crazy? It almost does look like there's more detail. 
Uh, like I'm like it with the like I didn't notice it before like during in all the rain and mist or smoke, but now it looks like I don't know. It just looks like everything's in even more detailed and looks even better. Like maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's just been a long, long time since I played and it always looked like this. But if not, it definitely looks like it improved. An electronic screech shatters my... Why am I reading in a normal voice? An ele electronic screech shatters my forgotten dreams and I sit up in a blind panic. So was the dialogue, or rather narration, this way at the very beginning of the game? I don't think it was, was it? I don't think it was this bad. I mean, I know it was always a little bit philosophical and... And Zack always put that sort of, um, <laughs> that sort of, um, energy into his narration, but I don't think it was this, like, this bad, this badly philosophical and stuff, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. The room feels, f the room feels foreign until I look over and see Mikhail rubbing his eyes in the bed across from me. What the F was that? Was it not just an alarm clock, or what? Okay, so it's his phone. I don't know why everyone's acting like this is the first time they've ever heard a phone beep. Um, we're seeing a lot of Brayden's foot in the background. Just throwing that out there. It's my phone. Probably an email. But I don't feel comfortable with all the bulges, honestly. And gosh, that is one solid pillow. It's not bending at all. Um... <laughs> Max groans from the other side of Mikhail and presses a pillow into his face. What was I doing for his voice? Um, I, I don't know. What was I doing for his voice? Uh, who even uses the ringer on their phone anymore? I don't think my phone has ever been off silence. You know, someone who wants to know and they get a message. Besides, how loud could one little beep from your phone have been. I don't understand. He groans a second time as Mikhail jabs him with an elbow and murmurs something about being nice. I ignore him and begin blindly scrolling through my phone's notifications, slowly realizing that last night wasn't some bad dream. Despite the shower, I can still smell the haunting acidic stench of stale smoke in my sinuses. How long were you breathing that air in? I ignored the majority of the notifications, brushing them aside, and zero in on the email. I never get email. Never? I mean, from your school email, you never get emails? Or do you just never check? Mikhail rolls over with interest. Anything interesting? My eyes shift back and forth, reading the email. Did they find out it was us who started the fire? It's from the school. Oh crap! What's it say? My stomach tightens with the passing of each line of text. Zack! I look up in defeat. They're working on temporary housing for all the students affected by the fire, but it's based on where our classes are. That's a good thing, right? No, because it means... <gasps> It means that Brayden and Zack won't be able to dorm together. My mind flashes back to Brayden and I walking to class in tandem. I mean, you can still, like, just go... Well, I don't know what the, the, the dorm situation's gonna be, actually. This temporary... I mean, will he be with another person? So then going to his dorm to hang out might be kind of awkward. I don't know. And the split in the path as we walk in two different directions. Brayden and I have different majors. Our classes aren't even close together. Oh crap! Brayden stirs beside me, stretching as he slowly wakes up. He squints in the sunlight, staring over at my phone, and mumbles as his hand methodically pats the desk behind him, searching for his glasses. Oh no, those things are just awful. I keep saying that, but... The truth is the truth. Cr 
crap. I just realized I don't have my phone. Did any of you guys see it last night after we got back? Did you have it with you? I don't remember seeing you with a phone, B. I wasn't really paying attention, though. With everything else going on... When did you have it last? I don't remember. Back in the dorm room, I think. Everything happened so fast. So it's up in flames? Where's my clothes from last night? Um, What in the universe? <laughs> what is going on right now? I don't even comprehend it. <laughs> Mikhail's just like... He's just like, what as well? Um, very interesting. Could this be a thumbnail? Maybe. I don't know. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand anything that happens in this game. Oh lord. Anyway. I can go get your clothes. I threw them in the laundry. You guys smelled like butt. Max awkwardly, er, Max awkwardly climbs over Mikhail in the bed and scratches himself on full display in the middle of the room. Okay. I mean, I guess. I gotta go take a piss anyway. Max exits the room, still in his underwear, with an obvious lump in the front. God, I am so... Oh, look at him. I love that he's, like... Zack's mood right now is my mood this entire game. <laughs> e. Anyhow, um... God, I love his face right here, actually. It's delightful. It's so cute. Um, I'm so not in the mood for him today. But I'm gonna have to censor so much in this video. I don't feel comfortable with anything that it's being shown. Relax, that's him trying to actually be helpful. This might be a chance for you to get to know him better. Ooh, uh, should I save? I don't know. It probably doesn't matter. Maybe. His tone did seem a bit different. He's too unpredictable for me, though. Chill! The unpredictability is actually the predictable part. Honestly, he's kind of like you. It's fun to watch him stumble around awkwardly sometimes when he's trying to be genuine. Plus, you could use all the support you could get right now. Max can be kind of a douche until you learn how to take him. Dude is loyal to the death, though. And if there's anybody who's going to spot a loophole in this entire thing, it's him. Um, what's wrong with Brayden? Brayden seemingly ignores anything happening in the room, continuing to search for his phone. Can you just call me? Maybe it fell behind the bed somewhere. You said the last place you saw it was the dorm. Honey, get over it. I scroll through my contacts and punch his name. Also, isn't your family rich? Like, you've... You can just buy a new phone. What were you reading, anyway? He asks the question, but I can tell he's distracted as he listens for my phone. For his phone. Do you hear it? No, it's ringing, though. Raiden's face falls. Zack, I have everything on that phone. Like what? There's some personal crap on there that people don't need to see. Do, do you have a diary on your phone that you keep? <laughs> Talk about how gay you are on there? <laughs> like seriously. I mean, does he take some risque pictures of himself? I don't know. Doesn't it like back up to the cloud or something? I don't remember. Sometimes I back up stuff and sometimes I don't. Things just happen too fast. Okay, guys. Maybe we should just focus on some other stuff. We can figure out the phone thing later. Brayden's shoulders slump. Our beach pic... Our beach pic was on that phone, Mikhail. And now it's gone. Oh god, our friendship is just in pieces now because we lost the picture. Raiden, what's wrong with you? Um, Mikhail's eyes travel somewhere distant and tragic. So, we go back and we do it all over again. It's just not the same. 
I know, B. I guess the advantage to having nothing to lose is that you have nothing to lose. While I feel a gut-wrenching sense of loss, admittedly, Brayden probably had more to lose beneath the ash and twisted steel of that dorm room than I did. No, actually, I think it's the opposite. His family's rich. What was he losing? Did he lose his leotard that he wears to wrestling? Uh, didn't he already throw all the leotard that we gave him away? Didn't he get, like, one official for his team? His side of the room was the one more personalized with pictures of his family and childhood. I know, there were a lot of weird pictures up there, weren't there? I don't know. And there's no denying, after everything that happened at the beach, that picture, that gift, meant everything to him. Really? Okay. It's not a big deal. I think I'm just gonna go shower again. All I smell is smoke. It feels like I'm watching an anime. You know how in anime they just get really sentimental about pointless mementos that are just, like, meaningless? It's like... Same thing right now, I feel. I don't know. It's like... In anime, it's like they'll risk their life to get back... They, they would risk their life to get back that picture. They'd run back into the burning building. And they'd be like... I did it, I got your picture back. And it's like, that's, that's almost what it feels like right now. It's not a big deal, it's just a picture. Like, Mikhail's still here, dude. Zack is still here. Mikhail tosses him a towel. Here, you mind if we figure out what to do while you're gone? That's fine, whatever. He's really a little pissy about it. Brayden saunters, who saunters out of the room, closing the door with a soft click behind him. Your boy is talking this crap hard, man. Is taking this crap hard. Don't remind me of crap. Yeah, he had a lot more stuff in there than I did. How are you doing for real? Numb. Pretending this is just a sleepover and I can walk back to our room whenever I want. Aw, oh, come on. Was staying over here that bad? I smile up at Mikhail, sensing his attempt at taking some tension out of the moment. Staying with you isn't bad. It's your roommate I'm worried about. Why do you look so sensual right now, Zach? This is... Are, are, are you and Mikhail gonna get really close to each other and press your foreheads into each other again? Like, very sensual. The door clicks and I look over, hoping that it's Brayden. Despite feeling completely powerless over all of this, I'll admit I'm struggling with some serious separation anxiety. From who? Brayden? He's just taking a shower. I just can't get close enough to him. It's almost like I'm afraid something bad is going to happen to him if I'm not around. You... Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Alright, interesting. Um, <sighs> Max bursts through the door with excitement. He's chomping noisily on a piece of gum that's half the size of his fist. Yo, did you guys hear classes are cancelled for everyone that was affected by the fire? Max, you weren't affected by the fire. Our dorm is fine. Psh, <laughs> so? That takes like two seconds to change. My eyes roll. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, I don't understand. Um, his eyes survey the room. Where'd the other one go? Shower. Oh, okay. I'm going to take his clothes down there then. The door, cl the door closes again. So, what else was on the email from earlier? What's going on? Apparently the school is trying to put together a makeshift housing accommodations for people, and they're organizing it by lecture buildings. Since most of the buildings around here focus on a specific major, it's likely that Brayden and I are going to be split up. What's his major? I don't think I've ever asked. I forget his major, honestly. Is it business? I don't know. Okay, no. He doesn't know yet. He's just doing general education classes for now until he decides. But don't you have some of those too? Sure, but those are pretty spread out. 
Most of my classes are in the psychology building. Mikhail's phone vibrates, and he rolls over to grab it. Well, Max was right. Looks like there w there's a mass message going out about accommodations and class adjustments. I guess we just wait and see what happens. Well, you got the Wii part right, so what do you want to do today? I don't really know. Okay, now he's really sauntering. Well, I mean, it was Brayden who was sauntering before, but Max is sauntering really. It's, it's powerful. The door bursts open again, and Max parades back in for what feels like the 40th time. Brayden will still be f a few minutes. He's naked as F. Well, that's typically how people are in the shower. His name is Brayden. Same thing. Ooh, we got some foot. We got some Max foot this time. Max spills into a chair at his desk. So are they all really just going to hang out in their underwear? Because, like... I mean, you have people over. I don't know, it's just kind of weird. Like, okay, you're both all guys, but, like, you're all gay. But, like, you're all gay, so, like, who cares, I guess. I don't know. It's still weird to me. Put on some clothes. Wow, you're doing homework? Psh, <laughs> no. Just watching... <sighs> While we wait. I only made it through half this one video last night, before you guys came in here talking about people's houses burning down, and it made my D soft. Like, what in the world? This is strange. So is he going to... touch himself during? Or does he just like to watch and not do anything? Does he watch it like it's a... like it's a Saturday morning cartoon? I don't know. I look at Mikhail, exasperated. He smirks. So back to what we were talking about. The way you overthink crap, the last thing you need to do is sit around and get up inside your own head. What do you want to do today? I look over at Max, unsure of how to talk about all this personal crap in his presence. Well, you still got class and stuff, so I don't know. I may just walk around and clear my head some. Class is cancelled. Not for you guys. Yeah, it is. I cancelled... I cancelled crap my damn self. You're not doing this on your own, man. But what about your internship and stuff? I already emailed Dr. Hodges and told her what was up. Didn't look like anyone got hurt last night, so she's managing at the clinic and told me to take the day off. We all turn our heads as a light knock raps at the door and it slowly creaks open. Look at him, like a cute little mouse. Brayden steps in cautiously. You don't have to knock, B. You live here. Aw, we're all a big happy family. Yeah, you don't have to knock, Brayden. I already saw you naked, so we're cool now. Brayden blushes. It's Brayden. Wait, what was he saying? Because... Oh, Brandon. I've been... I was like, before when Zach was like, his name is Brayden. I was like, what are you talking about in my head? But he's been saying Brandon. I did, I've not even... My brain auto-corrected. Um... Push. So, how are you doing, B? Meh. Good as can be expected, I guess. Little hungry. You like coffee? Oh my gosh, look at Zack's hair. Oh my lord, it was a mess back then, wasn't it? Oh no. It was a mess back then. Look at that, that, that mop on his head. I smile, thinking back to our first visit to the coffee shop together when I asked him the same thing. What? I smile at Brayden. It seems like ages since I've done that. Just a good memory of something we didn't lose that last night. Brayden sheepishly smiles back. So, you never answered. Do you like coffee? Sure. I mean, sure, but I'm broke. I don't have any... How are you broke? I still don't get that. 
I don't have any money on me and no phone to call home. It's not like I know anybody's number. I'll pay. Shock doesn't even begin to describe my reaction. Brayden blushes again. Do you have to blush over that? Oh crap, if you're buying, I'm feeling expensive today. You can buy your own damn coffee, Mikhail. You're the effing doctor. I'm taking... I'm talking about those guys with the burnt down house. I mean, thanks, but you don't have to buy me anything. I can probably just head over to one of the cafeterias in the other dorms. They've got to have some type of plan for feeding us. No way. That food tastes worse than Mikhail's butt. I'll buy. You guys can figure out... I mean... You say that like you aren't eating it every day, though. You guys can figure out where to go, though. I'm not trying to concentrate on this video. This guy is so effing hot. I wish he lived closer. I mean, so are they not going out? Like, what is what is their relationship status? Mikhail and Max. Um... Yeah. Mikhail smirks at Max, and I see a brief glimpse of chemistry between them. Well, one of my teammates just got a job at a coffee shop, Zach, and I went... Wait, and I went to... Wait, what? Oh, wait, that made sense, okay. He'll probably give us a discount. I can drive if you guys want. Wait, you got a car here? What kind? You thought I had a thing for cars? Max, you're gonna crap when you see Brayden's whip. A whip? Is that what you call a car? I don't know. Car posters littered Mikhail's wall. I never even noticed them the first time I was here. Shotgun. You can't call shotgun till the car's in sight, but fine. I nod to Mikhail. No more sensual looks. The adults will sit in back, I guess. I mean, I don't like how you said the adults will sit in back. He's still thinking that Brayden's 14. Or 12 looking. Sounds like a plan. Put some effing pants on and let's go before Max changes his mind. Um, looks like we'll be ending this episode of Straight Here, though, guys. So I hope you enjoyed our return to Straight. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye.